Um, her skin cancer, I suspect, was almost like a scar on her nose. And the tricky thing is her type of skin cancer is called an infiltrated basal cell carcinoma. That type can be fairly insidious. It can grow beyond what you can see. Um, by the time you know there's a problem, often they're a lot larger because uh, they can grow not necessarily just on the surface, but actually can grow like a scar. And basal cell carcinomas can eat skin, muscle, bone, cartilage. I've seen them bigger than softballs, but they're slow growers. They're problems that take years, not days or weeks to be a problem. And as long as you're seeing a dermatologist, they know what to look for and they'll be able to find it before it becomes a problem. Now her cancer in particular had been there for years. Um, and by the time we got, it got to me, it was, was pretty much her entire nasal tip. Um, that's okay. I mean, we do these all the time. So we knew what to do to help her. Uh, certainly probably bigger than she was planning on, but I think the outcome was good. Depending on when they're caught, we, I've seen them as small as a pinhead to as large as a softball. And so uh, generally if a basal cell is on the head or the neck, the Mohs micrographic surgery is approved and your insurance will cover it. And the nice thing about that is just because Mohs surgery gives you the highest cure rate with the smallest defect. And so depending on when it was caught, had it been caught earlier, certainly it wouldn't have had to be such a big deal in terms of how the, the footprint of the reconstruction it would have been an easier day for her and certainly easier for her in the weeks to follow. It would have been a much smaller scar. But uh, by the time she got to me, that was kind of a foregone conclusion. It was what it was. We had to get it out. It took four stages, meaning she was here and I, we, had to, we took a first layer of what we thought the tumor was. But with Mohs surgery, you're able to let the microscope guide you. So there's no guesswork involved. We check every cell of the margin. And we had to go back three more times for four stages until we got it all. The nice thing about that is, well, I guess the downside of that is that it took four times, but the upside of that is that we know that the wound we got was the smallest it could possibly be to still give her a cure. And so that's the, the pro and con. And then as far as the, the bilobe uh, flap, that's the repair technique. There's lots of different things that you can consider anywhere from, you can do flaps where you use local tissue, like a bilobe flap. That's by far preferred to use local tissue that still has a blood supply because it's going to match for color and contour. It's going to look the best. And I think you can look at her nose and appreciate that. The graft would look like a patch on a quilt. Doable if you have to do it, but certainly not ideal. And uh, there's certain things, there's, there are things that are more complicated that would have worked for her, but gratefully we didn't have to do them. And then there are things that are simpler that we couldn't do because of the defect was as big as it was. So really, I think the best of both worlds was the bilo flap for her. And it gave her both a good cosmetic result. And the most important thing really is that she was cured of that basal cell carcinoma. The chance of that coming back is less than one in a hundred. And now where we're sitting here, I don't know how long out we are, six months or a year, or maybe even a year and a half, uh, but she's got no signs of recurrence. She's seeing her dermatologist every six months for skin checks. She looks great and overall I'm pretty happy with her.